What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a Minecraft server with Docker in under five minutes. So it's going to be a vanilla Minecraft server, but it can be modded if you want. We're not going to go with it in this video, but you are going to be able to set up your own vanilla Minecraft server with Docker in under five minutes and it's going to look just like this. So if you follow along the video, you'll be able to have one of these Minecraft servers just like this run in five minutes and you can be playing it with you and your friends. So stay tuned and let's get going. Then you need Docker and Portainer set up, and then from there we can install and set up the Minecraft server. So to start, you can see I have my Linux machine. It's actually labeled Docker. It just has some basic hardware. I have four gigs of RAM, one CPU core. If you're going to be using your Docker machine more seriously to distribute, you know, services throughout your house and host a Minecraft server, you probably want to beef these resources up. Probably give it more CPU and definitely more RAM. This is the bare minimum. This is just for my test machine, my uh, example machine for when I make videos. My actual Docker machine has probably about 8 to 12 gigs of RAM and more CPU cores. So it's up to you what you can allocate for your machine, but definitely, especially if you're going to be playing Minecraft, you want to make sure it has higher resources. But that's enough about that. Let's get into the actual setting of the Minecraft server. So after you get into your machine and you set up Docker Portainer, all you need to do is just go over to App Templates. And again, I'm using the Nova Spirit App Template. And I'll have a link in this in the description. But we just come over here, you can search Minecraft, and here's Minecraft server. It's a super simple deployment, and you can see you can change the name. So I'm gonna call it Bar Minecraft. And we're gonna leave that default for the network, and we're gonna leave the EULA true. So when you actually make a standalone server, like installing it on Linux, you need to change a file so the EULA is agreed to true. But this is fine, so we're just gonna deploy the container. And you can see the container was successfully deployed. And if we come over here to the logs, and you can see it's starting, so we'll come over to the logs. And you can see it's starting to build out the world and build out the server. Again, this is just going to be a plain old vanilla server. We can do it so it has mods and different packs in it, but we would have to change the Docker Compose. We could visit that in the future if there's interest, but today I'm just doing a plain vanilla server. So we'll kind of come back after this finishes building out the server, and then we'll be from there. So after about a minute or so, you can see it prepares the spawn area, it goes from zero all the way up to 100, it says it's all done, and then it gives you a couple of information that Archon's running and whatever else. On top of my head, I'm not sure what Archon is, but I know that means the server's running, so we're good to go into actually Minecraft and go to play. So one thing you would do want to grab is the address of your Docker machine if you don't know it, so you just copy it right out of there. And now we're going to open up Minecraft and we're going to be able to connect to our world. So the nice thing about using the Docker version of Minecraft is that it's always going to pull the latest container version. I mean the latest world version. So like you can see over here we're on 1.20.1. If you want to use a different version, you could actually just go in the Docker Compose and edit it. Or if you want to, you know, change different images or however it works out, you could do that as well. Like I said, you just got to go in the Docker Compose, change the version number, and it'll pull that version of Minecraft. But for us, we want to use the latest one. So I'm going to come into multiplayer. And then we can, I'm going to remove this one because this was an old world. This is my actual Minecraft server I run off my server. And now we're going to connect to our new server. So we're going to call it Bar Minecraft. And then we're going to put in the server address for our Docker machine. And I'm going to click done. And then after a minute it should come up being able to connect and then we'll be able to play. So as you can see here's our, our new server running off of Docker. It actually says a vanilla Minecraft server powered by Docker. Super convenient, and I think we did this in way less than five minutes. So if we join, it's going to connect up, and you can see it's joining the world. If you play Minecraft, you know this is what it normally does. If you haven't played Minecraft before, well, this is what it does. Um, and here's our world. You can see everything spawned in really nicely. And again, this is running on a Docker machine sharing four gigs of RAM with all my containers. I don't have any containers on this machine at the moment because it is a fresh install, but you can see Minecraft's running pretty smoothly. It might lag a little bit in the video, but I don't think it is, but very smooth, I have to say, and uh, I might run this for now on if I want to do like a little solo world because it's so convenient, super simple to deploy, and it uh, works out really nice, so you can see that works, so I'm going to disconnect, so now you can see that we have Minecraft deployed, it's running, and it's healthy, and one more thing we do want to keep in mind is that we come over here, we're going to come to duplicate and edit, and we want to check on the restart policy. So on your Docker containers, you could always change the restart policy. Let's say they do power off or your system restarts. I want to keep it on always. So anytime that there's, let's say, a system restarts or maybe I lose power in a power cycle in my house, 
my docking container for Minecraft is always going to turn back on. It's always going to restart my server, and it's always going to be available. If you do this on like a regular Linux machine, you'd have to write a service to tell it, hey, if the machine restarts, make sure you restart this server so it starts up again, and everybody can play your Minecraft server. If you want to share your Minecraft server with your friends, you just have to go get a domain, and then you would have to push it back to the local address for your server and link it to your public address. I'm not going to go over that in this video. This was just really to go over how to set it up. And uh, if you want to do that, there's guides online. You can just search it up, or maybe we can address it in a later video. But this is how you would set up your Minecraft server in five minutes and be able to play. So I appreciate you guys for watching this video. I hope you liked it. I know it was a quick one, but everybody plays Minecraft, so why not set up Minecraft the easiest way? And probably using one of my favorite tools is Docker and Portainer. It's super convenient with Docker because let's say you want to start over, you can turn off the server, you could delete the images, and then you could just restart it and redeploy a new container, and bam, you have a new world, fresh Docker setup, and everything's good. So, like I said, I hope you guys like the video. If you want to see any future videos going forward on different topics, drop a comment below, or you can join my Discord server. I'll have a link in there, and we can talk about different video ideas, and we can work on getting them made for you guys, so you can see stuff maybe you want to see, or projects you want to work on. Uh, so, join up the Discord server. Make sure you drop a like and subscribe. It's really helping the channel grow. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.